When my husband was getting his degree in art, he was asked to do a self-portrait. And that is what he came up with. Yes, he had a mohawk at the time. Yes, we spent I don't know how many hours sitting outside with the camera taking pictures of his head up against the sh house with the shadows, trying to get all of the different images in that he wanted to get in. Um, and I'm still not sure that he was happy with the picture because when he finished it, I said, you know, I think it's awesome. I think we should put it up on the wall. And he was just like, meh, doesn't really demonstrate how I feel about myself. So this week we're talking about the self, uh, which, if you think about it, really has some, some really broad implications. Um, so first of all, what is the self? If I were to ask you, um, answer the question, I am, 20 different times, that would give me an idea as to what your self-concept is or your understanding of yourself is. So these could include things like, I'm a mom, I'm a student, I'm a psychologist, I'm a um, motorcycle rider, those sorts of things. So when we put all of those pieces together, that creates our self-concept or our understanding of ourselves. And if you go through um, chapter 2 in the Myers book or unit 3 um, in our class, you'll see all these different concepts relating to the self. And so my goal with these little um, videos isn't to go over the entire chapter for you or to do a lecture. It's more just to talk about some stuff that hopefully you'll recognize from the the chapter that you may find interesting or that you may that may kind of help you to be more interested in what we're talking about this week. Um, so, as we're talking about self-concept, self-concept can be made up of a couple of different pieces. First of all, self-esteem is going to fall under your self-concept. Self-esteem is a global evaluation of the self. So, if I were to think of all of my pluses and all of my minuses and put them all together and decide, you know, overall how do I feel about myself, that would be my self-esteem. Now, we also talk about um, how we behavior or how well we do in certain situations, what we call self-efficacy. Um, so self-efficacy is the idea that in this situation I feel good about myself, whereas in this situation I don't feel so good about myself. Um, some examples, you know, I was talking about my husband and his painting class previously. If one were to ask me to paint a self-portrait, um, I would probably start thinking about dropping the class as opposed to, okay, how am I going to get this done? Um, so for me, thinking about painting a self-portrait is more of a threat than a challenge, whereas my husband thought of it as a challenge. Um, so in terms of my self-concepts relating to painting, definitely, um, definitely low. So my thoughts about myself in terms of my self-efficacy, how effective will I be in doing a self-portrait would be really low. Whereas if someone said to me, hey, can you make a cheesecake for Saturday, and I had the time to do it, which is important, um, then I would definitely say, sure, because I, I feel good about my baking abilities. So we're going to see that we have self-efficacy that's really high in some areas, whereas we have self-efficacy that's not so hot in other areas. Um, we also see that some people have more um, what we call self-control than other people do. And it's the ability to tell yourself, like, mm, no, I don't need that extra piece of chocolate cake. Or, no, I shouldn't spend my extra money that I have this week. I should save it for if I have a problem next week, things like that. Um, so some people are better able to control themselves than other people are. And there's actually been some interesting research within the past couple of years, um, some of it done by a colleague of mine named Nathan DeWall. He actually did some research on um, whether or not people are able to control themselves in certain situations. And what he found is that we actually have kind of a limited amount of self-control, and self-control can be related to actual physical energy. So um, we can actually increase our, our, our brain's ability to cause self-control by increasing the amount of glucose available in our system. So increasing the amount of sugars available in our system, which is really thought of as kind of a um, you know food for our system. So if we're feeling low in self-control, then we can actually you know go to Walgreens and get um, a glucose shot that 
you know, people with diabetes can take in order to increase their glucose and, or if they're having a problem with their glucose, I should say, and that can actually increase our brain's ability to increase our self-control, which is kind of amazing if you think about it. We simply, a lot of times think about self-control as just, you know, like, oh, well, I just, I'm not good at it. Well, a lot of times what we find is that self-control actually is really low when people are tired when people are already frustrated. Um, so think of it also as kind of a mental energy thing. So if I'm tired, mentally, frontal lobe-wise, my brain is just not working so hot. And so my ability to control myself is going to decrease. Um, so I may be more likely to yell. I may be more likely to get frustrated. I may be more likely to um, do something I said I wasn't going to do. So if we've got people who are trying to quit using substances and they become overtired and frustrated, then we can predict that they may start using their substance again, which will make them feel bad about themselves um, because their self-control is at a, a low. So what we could suggest instead is, you know, take a, a shot of glucose, take a nap, those sorts of things can actually help help us to increase our self-control. Um, so, so those are some of the things that I find interesting in this unit that hopefully have kind of given you some interesting things to think about as you move on through the rest of the unit. I look forward to talking to you this week about um, how the self is portrayed in music lyrics. That's going to be our discussion board for this unit. And I look forward to seeing what songs you actually pick. I really like looking at the songs and, and listening to the songs. So if you have a link to it, say um, the video on YouTube, something like that, definitely share it because I would like to hear what sorts of, of songs you guys listen to um, and how you think about the lyrics in terms of the self. Thanks. Have a great week.